Good evening, everybody. Good evening, young people. Are you guys okay? Can I kindly ask you guys to stand? How is everybody doing tonight? I can only hear Cheng's voice, guys. Come on. Are you guys all right? Okay. All right. Maybe just to start the engine, um, I've got a little small game. Maybe some of you might know it, some of you might not know it. It's called Simon Says. Okay. How many of you know it? So if I say Simon Says, touch your head, you touch your head. If I don't say Simon Says, do it. If you do it, you sit down. But at the end, I'm going to win. I can promise you that. Are you guys ready? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay. Let's start. Please, no cheating. Just make sure the person next to you is not cheating. Okay. So, Simon says, <laughs> touch your head. If you're too slow, also, I'll make you sit down. Because they're still thinking about it. Don't think, just do. Okay? Don't leave your head, Jenge. Simon says, touch your shoulders. Elbows. Everybody that touch the elbow, please sit down. Please sit down. Just be honest. Just be honest, guys. Come on. <laughs> All right. Simon says, touch your eyes. Nose, Jenga, sit down. Okay. Simon says, touch your elbows. Eyes. Everybody that touch their eyes, please sit down. <laughs> Messi, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Simon says, touch your knees. Head, sit down. Simon says, touch your shoulders, head, Brooklyn, knees, eyes. Simon says, touch your toes. Okay, guys, come to the front. Come to the front. So I've won. You see, I didn't say Simon says, but everybody's coming. I told you I'm going to win. I told you I'm going to win. <laughs> but you guys can make your way to the front. <laughs> No, I told you I'm going to win. Eh? I didn't say someone says come to the front, but everybody's coming. So I won at the end of the day. So guys, come, come, come. Greet somebody as you come to the front. And just encourage them that we're in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Come, guys, come. Okay, this is the rule. No one behind any chair. I think that one is clear. No one behind any chair. There's, there's space for guys this side. There's also space on my right. Uh, You're free to come. But it's good to be together tonight. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and just to come together, to be together, regardless of the weeks we've had. I've had a very, very long week, very tiresome week, but I'm happy to be here. Eh? 
because I know that in the presence of the Lord, I'm refreshed, I'm strengthened. Eh? In the presence of the Lord, there's everything, guys. And for me, when I come here, I'm not just coming because it's a Friday, I've got nothing else to do, but I'm coming because I want what the Lord has for me. And tonight, that's the same encouragement that I want to bring to us, that as we come, let's come with a heart that is expecting to meet with the Lord. Eh? The Lord loves you. Do you believe it? Do you tell the person next to you that the Lord loves you. That's why he brought you today. But truly, guys, the Lord loves us. Eh? We always hear that it could be anybody else. Anyone else could be here tonight. But why you? Why me? But in some ways, it's because of God's love, his grace upon our lives, that he keeps bringing us into a place where we can hear from him, we can receive what he has for us. Eh? As young people, the Lord has a plan for our lives. It's not for good old Ben, Rumbi, a few old timers, but it's for all of us. Eh? It's for all of us. And tonight as we stand, as we're going to praise him and worship him, where you are, just say, Lord, here I am. Speak to me. I want to meet with you. Eh? And the Lord is faithful to meet us at our point of need. Amen. So let's pray and just bring this time before the Lord tonight. Father, we want to thank you tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for bringing us in this place. And Lord, we know it's not by coincidence. It's not by might or by power, but it's only by your spirit, Lord. That, Lord, you have chosen each and every one of us. Amongst everybody else that you could choose, you have chosen each and every one of us to be in this place tonight. And Lord, many of us, maybe we might be here just religiously, but, Father, you are able, Lord, to touch us. You are able to meet with us, Lord. And, Father, tonight we just want to commit this time in your hands. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, Father, that may we not be distracted in your presence. Lord, even despite the weeks we've had, despite the situations, the circumstances we have left, perhaps at home, but, Lord, may we come with a heart that is expecting to meet with you. And so, Father, tonight, Lord, we welcome your presence into this place, Lord. Come, Lord, and touch our lives, Lord. Come, Lord, truly, and touch our hearts as young people, Lord. Lord, may we not know about your love, but may we feel your love for us tonight, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, those, Lord, that are weary, that you strengthen them. Those, Lord, that come discouraged tonight, that, Lord, you encourage hearts, Lord. Those, Lord, that feel so lost so far, Lord, your heart for each and every one of us has not changed. And, Lord, I pray that may we feel that heart that is drawing us closer to you tonight, Lord. So, Lord, we welcome your presence into this place. Be with us, Lord, in everything that we'll do. May your name continue to be lifted and to be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's worship the Lord. Calling me. 
Tina Tina Similla Papo Similla Pa Similla Ugumo
Akuna wakaita sa Jesu. Akuna wakaita sa ye. Akuna wakaita sa Jesu. Aku akuna.
Amen. Amen, young people. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Father, for this time that you've given us, Lord, to just praise and worship your name, Lord. And we thank you that it is by your name that we've been called, Lord, not by any other name, Lord Father. And for that reason, we just want to bless you, Lord. And we pray that you may have your way in our midst tonight, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the praise and worship team. And you may have your seats. Let us try to sit in the two front sections here. Okay, so once again, good evening, everybody. How is everyone today? Are you guys okay? Are you happy that it's Friday? Okay, well, I'm hearing mixed feelings here. Some are happy, some are not. I don't know why. Okay, so before we start... Is there anyone who is joining us for the very first time? Of course, welcome to everybody, new and old. But specifically, is there anyone who is here for the very first time? If there is, please show by raising your hand. I'm sure we've got some new faces. Let's see. All right. Please do stand. Let's clap hands for him. All right, do you mind telling us your name and where you're from and who invited you? Vuyani. Vuyani, okay. Welcome, Vuyani. Okay, well done, Emmanuel. Okay, so we've got Vuyani. Is there anyone else? Um, I see two seemingly you young ladies. <laughs> They're trying to hide. Not you. <laughs> Do you mind standing and telling us your names? Don't be shy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Tandy. <laughs> All right, well, a warm welcome once again. All right, <laughs> lovely. Okay, so just to get into the announcements. Uh, so today we have one specific announcement, which is um, we want to start a little drama club, skit club. And we just want to invite you, if you're interested in being a part of this, please see um, Do today by that corner over there. Even if you feel like you're not all that good at it, um, we just want to use it as a way to reach out to different young people out there. And so please, 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 or even if you feel like you are super talented and you want to be a part of it, don't be shy. Just come over to that corner today um, after the meeting. But otherwise, I'll just like to invite our Pastor Tulisi to come and be with us. Hi guys, how are you? You okay? You better than me? Hmm? <laughs> You're not sure? Uh, it's good to be together tonight to see all your faces. Ah yes. 
So we sang that song, Christ is Enough for Me. Um, you know, the, the thing with me is whenever I sing a song, I really, well, most of the time, let me not say all the time, but I really consider the words very carefully. And um, the question is, is Christ enough for us? Really, 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 truly. And uh, today, I'm sure some of you have seen the topic or the title that I want to share on. It's Patience. And there's just a little addition to that, patience in suffering. And we will understand what I'm talking about by the time we get to the end. But who wants a fire that lasts? Who wants to have fire that lasts? I'm sure most of us, huh? We want to be on fire. We want to be consistent, isn't it? We want to be able to burn for Jesus consistently. How many of us feel consistent? Feel. Even me, I'm not raising my hand, as you can see. Eh? Uh, uh, we don't feel very consistent, do we? We feel like yo-yos. Who knows a yo-yo? Okay, still, still, yeah. We feel like we are up and down and all over the place. But today, I hope, by the grace of God, when we understand what patience and suffering means, we will understand the road to perfection, if I can put it that way. The road to coming to that place where we can be consistent. When we look at people like Uncle Richard, Brother Mickey, the older brothers, even Uncle Levi Masugu was with us last week, we, we envy them and we wonder, how have you served the Lord for so long? I mean, my Brother Levi always shares how he started serving the Lord when he was at school. And the question is, how have they lasted? And today, let, we want the Lord to really help us. So let us pray, and I want to encourage you and to ask you, just give me your attention for these few minutes. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Just give me your attention, and let's trust the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Father, we thank you tonight. Most of us are tired from a long day at school because of the heat or whatever has taken place, but here we are. We are in your presence. And Lord, whenever we come, you have got something special for each and every one of us. And Lord, I pray tonight that you'd speak to my young brothers and sisters, that Lord, you'd show them through your word the road that they are called to take, and that each and every one of them will be willing to embrace that road so that, Lord, they can come to maturity. Thank you, Lord, that maturity is not age, but maturity is of those that have accepted the work of God and what God wants to do. We thank you, Lord, and we invite you to this place. In Jesus' name, as we all say, amen. We want to welcome anyone who is joining us online. Welcome. Thank you for being with us tonight. So those that have their Bibles, let's open to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So patience in suffering. So before we talk about the patience aspect, we are going to talk about the suffering aspect first and then see how we are called to have patience in suffering and what fruit it produces in our lives. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Are you there? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Underline the word, to us who are being saved. So that, that statement, to us who are being saved, literally means it's a continuous process. It's not a one-day thing, but it's a continuous process. It's a continuous what? Process. Okay, I want to see if people are awake, switched off. It's a continuous? Process. I'm waiting for someone to answer. It's a continuous? Process. Okay, because I could see some people here. I'm a light, I'll be off. Let me see this side. It's a continuous? Process. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's continue. So the message of the cross is foolishness. Foolishness to those who are perishing. Huh? Let's underline the word foolishness. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? It's amazing. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. It's incredible that 
the writer of this book says, where are all those guys that have studied for all the years? Where are the guys who have written books, who have discovered the stars, the moons, how many galaxies we have? And he says that for in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. The greatest scientists, the most intelligent people, unless God by his grace opens their eyes to salvation, they cannot know God. You cannot know God because of your intelligence. That's what the Bible is saying. It's saying, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. Huh? No matter how intelligent people are, the wisdom of this world cannot bring us to a place where we can truly understand God's plan for our lives. Verse 22, for the Jews request a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God, Christ the wisdom of God. Now, when we know that Jesus Christ, we all know that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. And do you know what the cross symbolized? The cross, cross was used as a form of humiliation of the worst kind to the worst criminals. So the people who were crucified, the people who were hung on a cross, Jesus was not the first one to be hung on a cross. But if anyone was going to be hung on a cross, it was because they were the worst criminal ever. It was humiliating, and the Jews believed that whoever was hung on a cross was cursed. And the Bible says God chose the cross. The thing that the Romans used to humiliate somebody, the thing that the Jews looked at and said, the person who hangs on a cross is cursed, God chose the cross as the instrument to bring salvation to you and I. The suffering of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God in bringing men to know God as their personal Lord and Savior. So you can imagine back in the day, that's why that man, when he saw Jesus, he said, if you are the Son of God, do something. Take yourself out of the cross. You are the Son of God. Because they believed that surely if you are the Son of God, you cannot die in that way. You cannot be hung on that cross. It's humiliating. It's for the worst criminals. You are cursed. And yet God chose the cross to be the instrument of our salvation. And he says that through the cross is the wisdom of God. And my brothers and sisters, that same cross we are going to see now in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, we are called to also take a road that is similar to Jesus. We are also called to go through a certain suffering that is similar to Jesus. I'm not talking about a suffering of being beaten, no. But there is a suffering that we go through that we're going to see in 1 Peter chapter 4 that we need to go through if we are going to truly carry the life of Christ. But we need to understand that what that suffering that we are called to carry is humiliating. Eh? It's embarrassing. In today's world, it's not cool. The suffering that a young person is called to go through is not cool. That's why I'm starting off by sharing about the cross that Jesus had to carry. Eh? To show us that it was humiliating, it was humbling, it was for the worst criminals. Today, the world does not want to suffer. They prefer to think good things just come. Eh? No one wants to suffer. Even for us as young people, all of us, we've grown up in a world where everything is instant. Somebody sends you a WhatsApp, you get a blue tick. If they don't respond in two minutes, why are you blue ticking me, isn't it? Because we are used to instant. Even me, when I send a WhatsApp and I check it's a blue tick, I'm like, huh? now I start to think, is the guy offended with me? What did I do? Huh? Maybe somebody's just busy washing the dishes, maybe, or something like that. But we live in a world where we want instant results. But we need to understand that the Lord wants to train us and bring us to maturity through a certain road of suffering. 
Let's open our Bibles to the book of First Peter chapter 4. You know, I wrote here, Jesus' death on the cross reveals God's power to save people from sin. Hmm? Jesus' death on the cross reveals God's power to save people from sin. One Peter chapter four, are you there? I need to open on my phone because unfortunately my Bible something tore off there. One Peter chapter four. Just give me a moment. Who wants to suffer here? Who likes to suffer? I want to see guys. Let's see the spiritual ones. Who likes to suffer? Yes, <laughs> So the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 from verse 1, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough, enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, rivalries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation speaking evil of you. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version, verse 3. So verse 3 says here, For the time already passed enough for doing what unsaved Gentiles like to do, living unrestrained as you have done, in a course of shameless sensuality, lusts, drunkenness, caressing, drinking parties, and wanton idolatries. So he makes it clear that in the past you used to live that way. And in verse 1 he says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same mindset. So we are called to walk the same road that Christ walked, but not the walk that he walked by going to die on a physical cross. But the apostle Peter is saying that in the same way Christ suffered, through when sinners were beating him and persecuting him because he called himself the son of God, even for you as a Christian, you are called to suffer against the things that come to fight against your flesh. So he names them and he says, let's go back to the New King James Version. He says things like, for we have spent enough of our past life where we walked in lusts, in drinking parties, in drunkenness, huh? in caressing, in doing all these things. He says we used to live like that. But now that we are in Christ, verse 1, arm yourself with the same thoughts that Christ have. Be willing to suffer against those things. Be willing to resist sin. Be willing to, re to resist temptation. And he says in that resistance of sin, in that resistance of temptation, there is a suffering. Huh? Because naturally in our flesh, we want to do those very things. Huh? No? Naturally in our flesh, we are drawn to lust. Naturally in our flesh, we are drawn to parties. Naturally in our flesh, we are drawn to, to bad movies. Naturally in our flesh, we are attracted to sin. And then the Apostle Peter says, Since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So you and I are called to go through a certain suffering. So we cannot expect to find victory from sin by just accepting sin in our lives. You understand what I mean? There needs to be a willingness to suffer against sin. There needs to be a willingness to, to, to set my phone aside. There needs to be a willingness to lose worldly friends. 
because they are not beneficial to my Christian life. There needs to be a willingness not to go to parties. That pressure and that suffering, we will not find the victory of, over sin. We will continue to walk as defeated Christians. We will continue to be young people bound by the same things. Bound by pornography, bound by lust, bound by the same friends. Because we are not willing to lose something. We are not willing to suffer the loss of a bad friend. We are not willing to suffer the loss of not, of not going to a party. We are not willing to suffer the loss of being laughed at at school. And so because we are not willing to suffer that loss, we do not find ourselves growing in Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because unless you are willing to go through the difficult time, you will see now what the scriptures in the book of James mean. You won't find victory. So yes, we can bring to a meeting, and it's a beautiful meeting. We can have an altar call, and you come, brother, pray for me. I struggle with lust, and I lay my hands on you, pray for you. But unless you are willing, did you hear the word underline? Willing. Huh? Unless you are willing to suffer against that. I'm not saying you will not be tempted towards it, but unless you are willing like Christ, the Bible says, arm yourselves with the same mind. That means have the same attitude where you are willing to resist sin, where you are willing to resist what is not the plan of God for you, where you are not going to date because everyone is dating, I'm just going to date, it's easy. So that when I'm in my circle of friends and we are all talking about boyfriends and girlfriends, I have something to say. And yet deep down in your heart, you know it's not God's plan for you. But you need to be willing to suffer. You need to be willing to go through not having a girlfriend. <laughs> you need to be willing to, 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 to be ridiculed, to be laughed at. That's why he says in verse 4, what does he say? Verse 4, he says, in regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. And he's saying, speaking evil of you. So you need to be willing to be loved. It's, it's, it's Peter, I don't know how many centuries ago. He says, you will be loved. It. But it's good for you to be loved at because you are going through the same suffering as Christ. It's good for you to be ridiculed for your faith because you are going through the same suffering as Christ. But you need to be willing to go through it. Your friends need to know what you believe. Your friends need to know what you do not believe. <laughs> huh? I remember when I was at college, I was under pressure. And I remember, I'm telling you my secrets now. This is a new one, Ingram. It's not an old story. Ingram was teasing me, so I need to bring in new stories. And I says, we now know your examples. So, <laughs> but I remember when I was at college. And uh, because everyone is dating, this is after high school. You know, the pressure was so much that sometimes I remember I asked a girl out today, but the Holy Spirit was so strong in me, I had to break up with her the next day. <laughs> it's true. I was like, I knew it was the wrong thing. I knew it was not the plan of God. But the pressure, the pressure was strong. And I had to, and I knew when I went to bed that night, bad idea. And the Holy Spirit was like, bad idea. And now I had to go back the next day. You know what? I'm actually a Christian. And I don't, I don't think this is going to work. Huh? And I remember, I remember this other girl laughing at me. She laughed at me. She says, dude, huh? me and you could have been a thing, but you didn't even take a risk. She laughed at me in front of guys. Huh? It, was, it was not in college. They were sitting on the benches, those that have been to college. Everyone is sociing, and she's laughing. And you know, the problem is there. I don't think I suffered. I was like, oh, if I wanted to, I would, you know. But, you know, <laughs> huh? but deep down, Deep down I knew it wasn't the plan of God. And the Apostle Paul says you need to be willing to suffer that ridicule. To suffer that being laughed at. For you to become a mature Christian, for me to be standing in front of you today, I had to resist. I had to break up with that girl because I knew it wasn't the plan of God. I had to refuse invitations to parties because I knew it wasn't the plan of God. I had to 
not be friends with certain people because it wasn't the plan of God. Arm yourself with the same mind. That's the suffering that you are called to take. That's the suffering that I am called to take to resist sin, to resist temptation. Amen? Huh? Can you identify with me, some of you? You don't have to put up your hands. Some spiritual people. Huh? We have to. If we want to be mature, if we want to carry the life of Christ, if we want to be young people that will have something that speaks to the world, we need to be willing to suffer. Suffering equals to maturity. No suffering, no maturity. So there's no magic, magic wand that comes and says, oh, Brother Tully prayed for me, now I'm going to go to school and every girl I see I won't be attracted to. It won't happen, dude. <laughs> I can pray for you. I can pour milk on you. I can pour all the anointing oil on you. I can even, you can even fall through the anointing. But if you are not willing to suffer, you are not going to come to maturity. If you are not willing to resist what your flesh wants, you are going to remain a baby. Amen. It's very simple. I always give the example, you want to get married to a good guy, but today you want to play with the world. You, you get what you play with. If you want to be a marathon runner, like I've done once or twice, you need to train. You don't just go to a marathon and you just wake up and say, I'm going to run 42Ks. Come, try. Try if you never run 42Ks and say, I'm going to run 42Ks. You will puncture after five Five, maybe two Ks. Huh? Or maybe you can push two Ks, but let's try 20. Huh? You, 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 you can't. And that's the thing, young people. We can't expect to be mature if we are not trained by maturity. You understand what I mean? If we are not willing to go through the training of a Christian, and the training of the Christian is suffering, you can't just expect, when now you get to school, now you are a perfect man. No, you need to go through the training. And the training is? Aha, uh -huh, you're getting it. The training is? Yes, you need to suffer. No, you know, I couldn't. She just came in front of me, and I couldn't. She was just, she kept on pestering me. She kept on WhatsApping me. What about blocking her, bro? Okay, I can see that's not on the table. Let, let's go to James chapter 1. I can see, I can see that uh, blocking is not on the table. James chapter 1 verse 2. Listen to what this guy says. Listen to what he says. We're going to change something here. He says, my brethren, count it all joy. I'm going to add my own little version. When you go through suffering, it's, it's what he's saying in a sense. But here he says, when you fall into various trials. Eh? So my brethren, count it all joy. Can you believe it? He says, count it all joy to resist. Count it all joy when you face these things. Then what does he say? That the testing of your faith may produce patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing. I'll read that again. My brethren, count it all joy when you face various trials or when you fall into trials. When you go through temptations, when things are thrown at you, when your friends laugh at you, when you are laughed at for not even being in a relationship, when you refuse to go to parties, where you refuse all the things that are not for you. Then he says in verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work. The other work for patience is endurance. So patience is not talking about sitting in a waiting room waiting for your doctor's appointment. That's not the patience the Bible is talking about. It's talking about endurance. Actually, the, the, the picture of patience is having a constant load on you and bearing that load. Eh? That's the picture here. It says, you know, let endurance, but let endurance, let patience have its perfect work. Bear that load. That temptation, those sufferings. It says, do not stop, but let it have its perfect work. 
so that you may be complete, lacking in nothing. Come, let me, come, come, God's gains. Eh? Patience is like a constant law. Can you carry me? You think you can? Can you? Try. Eh? So patience. He says, continue working, brother. Walk, walk, walk. Huh? So he says, let patience have its complete work. Carry the load. Accept the suffering. Do not come off. Guys, listen to me. Do not come off. Okay. Do not come off under the load. Okay. He's a strong guy, huh? I've just uh, put your CV out there. I'm joking. I'm joking. I couldn't resist. Huh? He says, let patience have its full work. He says, carry the load. Don't just give in to suffering. Don't just give in to sin. Go through it. Resist. Refuse. Feel the pain of not going to the party. Feel the pain of not having a girlfriend. Feel the pain of not watching bad movies. Feel the pain. And he says, do not only feel the pain, but let patience have its full work. Until the day God gives you a wife or a husband, feel the pain. Don't get off in the middle of the way and get yourself a girlfriend. It's, it says, let patience have its full work. So it doesn't stop in the middle of the way. Can you imagine you crossing a bridge, bro? By the Limpopo there. Crocodiles, everything. And all of a sudden, the bridge just stops midway. <laughs> has patience as its full work? No. Can you imagine running a marathon? And for 20 Ks, you are number one. And everyone's saying, go Peshi, go Peshi. And then you stop at 21 kilometers. Did you win the marathon? No, <laughs> you might have run. You don't suffer in vain. <laughs> don't stop midway. It says let patience have its full work. So run and finish. Feel the pain. Resist. Say to your friend, I am not doing that. Ah, you, you also too holy, bra. It's just, we just, we just, you know, we're just doing a little thing here on the side. No one will know. It's not even a sin. Show me where it's written in the Bible. But you know in your heart that it's what God doesn't want you to do. Let patience have its full work. Where is it written, do not date? Show me, show me where it's written, do not date. Wait, wait, wait. Huh? I've never seen it. Let patience have its full work. That's what the Bible is saying, no, no? But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. We don't win marathons by sitting in a pool and swimming the whole day. We don't win competitions by sipping on coffee the whole day and watching TV on how to, how to win a, 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 a game. No. You can, you can have all the notes about how to win. I can teach you. You can, I, you can say, Brother Tully spoke about suffering. You can even know the Bible better than me from A to Z. But if you are not willing to go through the suffering, you are not going to win the race. Let patience have its perfect work. You want to be mature? Suffer. You want to grow? Suffer. You want to be a Christian that will be an example to other people? Suffer. Go through it. Amen, young people. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. I read something this morning from Charles this afternoon. It says, faith is as vital to salvation as the heart is vital to the body. Hence, the javelins or the arrows of the enemy are aimed at our faith. Did you hear that? Faith is as vital to salvation as the heart is vital to the body. Hence, 
The javelins of the enemy, the arrows of the enemy are aimed at our faith. That's how much value your faith is. That's why you are tempted. That's why you face what you face. It's not abnormal that you're facing what you face. It's normal, but you need to resist. The Bible says you have not resisted to the point of bloodshed when you are fighting against sin. That's what the Bible says. Like Jesus, Jesus resisted to the point of bloodshed, but it says you and I have not resisted sin to the point of bloodshed. It is an honor to suffer for Christ. It's like a soldier that walks with the badge. When they laugh at you at school, you should get home and walk up straight and say, Mom, Dad, Brother Tully, they laughed at me for not having a girlfriend. Hallelujah. Yes, it's a badge of honor. It's a badge of honor not to run where they run. It's a badge of honor not to do what they do because you have counted yourself worthy to suffer for Christ. But it's not enough. Let it have its full work till the end. Because tomorrow there will be temptation. Tomorrow it's not a girlfriend, it's something else. It's a crooked deal. Tomorrow it's something else. Tomorrow somebody comes and spites you and speaks evil of you and you want to fight back and Jesus says, keep your mouth shut. You need, that's your suffering. Huh? No. Accept. Suffer. Go through it. Hey, we know boys' schools. Ah, you see those seniors, they tortured me. I know where that guy stays. I'm going to hit him with a brick. Huh? Eh? Am I talking things that we, we know? Huh? I'm going to show him. Man, me, he doesn't know my cousin. My cousin James goes to the gym. He, that guy thinks he can bully me. Me, I'm going to show him, brah. Huh? But to, 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 to understand, I'm telling you guys, it sounds funny, but there is a relationship that we have with Christ, and that relationship is our identification with him. You can't say you have a relationship when you're not willing to identify with him. You can't say you have a relationship with somebody when you don't want to be seen walking with them. You can't say, me and this guy, we're cool. Bro, me and, hey, we, we buddies. Ah, but bro, hey, not here town, sing and be songs and youngies. Huh? We can't leave Jesus behind. We can't leave Jesus behind. We need to, that's, that's when we say identify with him, we are saying the same sufferings. Jesus, I am willing to go through it. I am willing to suffer with you. I am willing to carry that badge of honor. I am going to walk around like a victorious soldier. Everybody laughing, everybody cheering. You are a wimp. You are useless. You are not a man. You are not a girl. You don't even know this. You don't even know that. You have never done this. You are useless. Ha, 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 ha. Carry the badge of honor. Let patience have its perfect work because one day, one day, you'll be victorious. One day, they will be looking at you. Huh? How did you do it, bro? Huh? How, come you was, how come your life is in order? How come you married a good woman? How come your family looks in order? Because you suffered. Because you did not give in to temptation. Because you allowed patience to have its perfect work. Amen? James chapter 5. Who's ready to suffer? <laughs> not, not, not many hands still. Eh? You want to suffer for Christ. Huh? I didn't say who can suffer. I said who is ready. I would have, all of you would have put up your hands. Who is ready? Not who wants, eh? who can. It's what? It's English. Oh, it's key. Okay. Huh? So what are we, James chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Hey, people have been saying for years, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. And even today, people still come to you and say, oh, Jesus, we are No, that's what people say. When is this Jesus coming? He says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, 
and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. He says, indeed, we count them blessed. Those who what? Who endure. And he says, you have heard of the perseverance of Job, seen the end intended by the Lord. Who knows Job's story? It was not a very nice story, yeah? Who knows Job's story? What happened to Job? How much suffering did he suffer? Too much, huh? According to my standards, that's a bit extra. Huh? Lord, please make mine a bit less than Job. Maybe 1% of what Job went through. He lost his children. He lost his wealth. His wife denied him and she left him. His friends criticized him. His friends had so much opinions. Like your friends have. Most of you, your friends have opinions about your life. Don't they? Ah, you should, you should. You say, hey, James, he likes you, bro. Look at him, he's cool. What, what's the problem? Huh? Maybe there is a James I'm talking about who's real here. But, but it says, what I like about this scripture, you have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord. That means for your suffering, there is an end intended by the Lord. That means the Lord has something waiting for you on the other side of the suffering. That's the good news. We're not suffering in vain. Christ died on the cross. Everybody thought, ah, oh, the Son of God is dead. He's gone. He called himself the Son of God. He did this and that. Look at him now. He's buried in the tomb. And on the third day, he rose again. Hey? And the Bible says he rose in power. He rose in victory. And the enemy on that day was defeated. The Bible says if the enemy had known, if the world had known, if those that crucified Christ had known what they were doing on that day, they would have not crucified him. Huh? If you could understand the value of suffering, how precious suffering for Jesus is in his eyes, you would be willing to go through it because you understand there is a price that's waiting for you. You will understand that a girlfriend is not worth what's waiting for you on the other side of suffering. You will understand that having worldly friends is not worth what is waiting for you on the side. You will understand that compromising in a bad deal is not worth what's waiting for you on the other side. You will understand that and you'll be willing to go through suffering. So we need to understand that there is a price for suffering. There is a reward. The Bible in the book of Luke says, in this life, it says, for those that have left mother, father, brother, sister for the sake of Christ will receive much more in this life and in the life to come. So there is a reward for suffering. Guys, come on, that's exciting. That means I'm willing to suffer. I'm willing to go through it. I'm willing to lose everything that Christ asked me to lose. I'm willing for that work of patience because there is an intended purpose. There's a godly wife waiting for me. There's a victorious Christian life waiting for me. There's Christian brothers and sisters waiting for me. You know one thing that you learn about life is the coolest guy at high school. Sometimes when you meet them after 20 years, they don't really look that cool. Yeah? I always say perspective is the most amazing thing. <laughs> eh? What you call looking back, the other word? Intro? Not intro. Retrospect. Eh? Thank you. Retrospect is the most amazing thing. When you look back, you look at the guys, the rugby players, beard, tall, Big guy. You meet them after 10 years, you're like, dude, you are the cool. What happened to you? Bro, what's that? You're looking like a. Not you, but I'm giving an example. Huh? Bro, look at you, messed up, man. Sometimes you don't say it, but in your brain, you just think, yo. <laughs> Have you not met? Well, maybe let's talk about John, John, John Danes. Maybe, and, and, and maybe the other older guys. Have you not met some of your old school friends? And you're like, whoa. Mr. Handsome is messed up now. Huh? Sister Pretty has gone left. <laughs> After having a child at 18, things are not looking great for sister. Huh? But it's true, guys. 
That's why there's an intended goal for suffering. That's why, you know, and sometimes when we speak like this, we are not speaking because we are saying, oh, we want to see you guys suffer. We've gone through it, we are still going through it, and we know the prize that's awaiting you if you accept it. Because we've gone through what you've gone through. I've been at school. I've been 20. I've been unmarried. I know what it is. I'm not saying it's easy. I know what it is. I know what it is to be tempted. I know what it is to be pushed into things. I know what it is sometimes to even go to that party and feel like a loser standing in that party and everyone is dancing and I know I'm not supposed to be there. I know what it is. But I know the fruit of accepting that suffering of accepting to say no to ungodliness. I know the fruit. And that's why I can speak to you, not just reading scriptures, but saying these scriptures that we are reading tonight, they are true because I've seen them in my life. But patience needs to have its perfect work. The same way it still needs to continue in my life. I am not done suffering. <laughs> I am not done losing. I am not done going through my fair share of what Christ wants me to go through. So I'm saying, join with us in suffering. Join with those that say we want to identify with Christ. Join with us. Join the losers. We are the losers. We are not winners. We are not here to win anything. The only price that we are here to win is heaven. We are not here to win anything. We are here to repent if we need to repent. Even if we are right, we are here to repent. We are here to humble ourselves if we need to humble ourselves. Eh? Paul says to the Corinthians, you have become kings without us. How we wish we could rule with you. It says how God has put us at the end of the procession. He says we are losers, yet you guys are victorious. He says how I wish you could understand the price, the joy, and the value of accepting to lose. And this is, my, this, is, this is the call of Christ for you and I, young people. We want a victorious Christian life. Join us in suffering. Join us in being ridiculed. Join us in being fools for Christ. That's why I read that, that verse first in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. We are fools. That's the Bible. That's what it says. But join us. Hey, suffer for him. I'm telling you, it's something else, huh? but it's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. I don't know if you've, some of you are competitors here, some of you have gone done sport at school, but that feeling of winning a race after training for weeks and months, or that feeling of finishing, I remember finishing my first marathon. And your legs are burning. And you just think, I've just run 42 Ks. Wow. Training for six months. Waking up at 5 a.m. when it's dark. Uh, last year, we were training to walk a 300 and something kilometer walk to raise money for the Joburg Church. And I remember I had to ask Brother East. I'd wake up at 4 a.m. and say, East, please drive behind me. When it becomes light, you can then go and pick up the kids at school. 4 a.m., like a madman. Huh? But that, that feeling of finishing the race, everyone was waiting for us. After that 300, and I can't remember many Ks, you know the tears are in your eyes. You like, you just feel so accomplished. You're like, wow, I managed to walk all those kilometers. That feeling of victory. But what more when we suffer for Christ? That feeling of knowing that we're in God's plan. That feeling of getting married one day and knowing that the girl and the boy that I've married is the plan of God. That feeling of getting married pure. That feeling of knowing that today you stand and it's God's grace. And even more, the greatest feeling we want to have is to hear those words, well done my good and faithful servant. Can you imagine after you are die, you're dead, whatever, when you die, when you die, and you, poof, and when you get to the other side, because it just goes, tim, and then the lights the other side go on. And you find an angel saying, Hello, Tuli. Well done, Sunny. You've finished your race. You've run well. Can you imagine the feeling? I don't think we could ever imagine it. 
Today I was playing that song, I can only imagine what it would be like. Hey, you can only imagine. But we need to go through that suffering so that one day we can get there and that angel says, hey, 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 Tuli, we were watching you, bro. Sure, it was tough. Well done. No more suffering. You've done well. You've run your race. Yes, you fell. Yes, sometimes you, you did things you're not meant to do, but you woke up, you stood up again, and you ran the race. Guys, come on. There's no greater feeling. It's worth it. That's why we need to be patient. That's why we need to endure. Hey? Eh? Because there's an intended purpose. And the last thing I want to say, you cannot suffer for something you do not believe in. Eh? You cannot suffer for something you don't believe in. <laughs> it's very simple. It's true. You cannot wake up jogging for no, you, you don't, you're thinking, what, what am I, 4 a.m. Dude, what, are you crazy? Why are you waking up at 4 a.m. to train? Why, why, why was I waking up to walk 300 and whatever case, why was I waking up at 4 a.m.? Walking and running and jogging, carrying a bag, water and everything, carrying a weight. Like, what for? But there was a purpose. We we're trying to raise money for a good goal to build a church. But you cannot suffer for what you don't believe in. Why, what church? Why do you want to build a church? Why are you wasting your time? And what I want to say as I end, you cannot suffer for what you don't believe in. If you don't believe in Christ, if you are not born again, you, you won't understand what my sharing today. If you're not born again, my sharing to you is like, what's this guy talking about? Because you cannot understand it. But you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity tonight to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So that you can understand why we are suffering. So that you can understand why, as young people, we are refusing to be, to do what the other young people are doing. But you need to, you, you need to be born again. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I had to do that one day. Some young people here had to do that. And for you to be able to go through that suffering, for you to be willing to go through that work of patience, that endurance in your life, that resisting of sin, because if you don't believe in Christ, that's why he's our first example. That's why we read in 1 Peter chapter 4, have that same mind that is in Christ. You can't have the same mind that is in Christ if you are not born again, if you don't believe in him. And so my question once again, which is a question we hear every week, maybe, or oh, ever so often, do you believe in him? Are you born again? Do you want to be saved? Because that's the first door to freedom. You cannot receive the intended price if you're not born again. You will suffer in vain. So as we end this meeting tonight, my question to you is, do you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And come join us, fools for Christ. Eh? Come join us, fools for Christ. Let's stand tonight. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's just close our eyes where we are. And let's just consider what I've shared tonight. Maybe you are born again and you know that, woof. You've not really accepted suffering. It's not, a, it's not the end of it today. It can be the beginning. Maybe you've not understood that walk of patience. You've thought that patience is like waiting in a doctor's waiting room, sipping on some juice. But we've understood that we need to bear that load. We need to carry that load. We need to go through it. And today the Lord can give you the grace and the revelation to walk on that narrow road. And maybe you're here, you're not born again. And you're saying to yourself, Whew, Brother Tully, I want to accept Christ. I want to know him as my personal Lord and Savior. My brother, my sister, it will be my joy to pray for you tonight. It will be my greatest honor. And I can tell you it will be the greatest decision that you have made in your life. The greatest security is knowing Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Let's just close our eyes and worship Jesus. Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me 
Everything I need is in you, Lord. Everything I need, Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough, Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Let's just bring our hearts before the Lord tonight. Just talk to Jesus where you are. You have heard the word of God, it's spoken to you. Speak to him. If you need to repent, repent. If you need to ask him for a grace to stand in difficult times, ask him. But let's just speak to the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, I know that what I shared, even for my life, is not easy, Lord. Father, we are hard-pressed, left, right, and center. The situations of life, Lord, seem to throw everything at us each and every day. But Lord, we thank you for your word tonight that has reminded us that, Lord, the same road that Christ took, we are called to take. And Lord, I pray that you would reveal to us this narrow road. You would reveal to us this road of the cross. You would reveal to us this identification that we are called to, take, to have with Christ Jesus. And that, Lord, we would not draw back, but that, Lord, we would endure. That, Lord, we would persevere. That we would allow patience to have its perfect work. Lord, I pray tonight for every young girl and boy here tonight that, Lord, you would touch their lives. Lord, I know there is many that desire to serve you. I know there's many that desire to be examples. And yet, Lord, when the pressures of life come, they find themselves giving in. They find themselves drawing back. But today, Lord, I pray. I pray that you would reveal to them the joy of suffering. I pray that you would reveal to them the joy that comes after accepting, Lord, those difficult times. And that, Lord, as they go to their schools and as they go through the various issues of life, they will be willing, knowing that, Lord, it produces the life of Christ. Reveal yourself to them. Reveal yourself to us. Let the message of the cross not just be a language in our lives, but Lord, let it be a revelation and let it be a reality. Lord Jesus, we understand that revelation comes from you. So Lord, I pray tonight that you would bring revelation to the hearts of these young men and women. And Lord, I pray tonight, I know there are people here, as much as you know, Holy Spirit, who are not born again. Lord, they can hear the word of God. They can feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And as they stand in their place, they are even uneasy because of what they are feeling in their hearts. Lord, I pray tonight that, Lord, you would give them the boldness to say yes to Jesus. And that today would be their first day to take that first step of suffering, to walk, Lord, and say, yes, I am ready to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. If you are here this evening and you're saying, Jesus, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior, where you are, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand and say, I want to accept Jesus. Is there anyone like that tonight? If you are here, you say, I know I'm not born again. 
I know I'm not saved. I know what you're sharing, brother, is not what I know. Please lift up your hands. Don't worry about who's next to you. Just lift up your hand. Anyone like that? We're all born again. We are all sure of our salvation. Any other hand raised? No hand raised? No? No problem? Father, I thank you tonight that the days we are living in, they are days of such great turmoil where the things of the Spirit have become so foolish and the things of the world have become so much louder. And Lord, I pray for our young people in our church here and those in our sister churches. Holy Spirit, bring a boldness in our hearts. Bring a boldness to know that what we have is what the world needs. That we will not be ashamed of the gospel. That we will not be ashamed of the message of Jesus Christ. But that on the contrary, we will be willing. Lord Jesus, take hold of us. Lord, help us to say no to the world and yes to you. We want to please you, Lord. We are weak. We are frail. But you have promised in your word that your grace is sufficient for us. So I thank you tonight for the seed of your word. And Lord, I know that in due time, it will produce its fruit. So may all the praise and all the glory be given to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And we all say, Amen. 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 Let's go and suffer for Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Thank you for those joining us online. We are done. Have a good evening.